Hmm, greetings, humans. Before we continue my first ever journey through the Harry Potter series, just a few quick announcements. First, I wanted to give a heads up for the episode of Potterless that will be released on April 29th. That's the fifth Monday in April, and I will also be in Italy on a family trip celebrating my parents' 60th birthday. So because of those two combining factors, it's not going to be a regular episode of Potterless. I'm going to upload one of the bonus episodes that I've made in the past. It will be the Harry Potter debate that Lauren Shippen and I did as part of the Multitude live show. It's still going to be a very fun episode. It's just not going to follow the traditional format. Mainly, I'm not going to have the time to edit it and get it up in time. And I would be charging the patrons a fifth episode in April, which isn't necessarily fair since normally it's four. And also, I'll be in Italy. And I would be dissatisfied with myself and the production of the episode if I had to rush it or half-ass it, whatever. So I think the best solution to give me a little break since I've never taken one since starting Potterless is just to put up this bonus episode. It'll still be the regular length, it's just not going to be the same type of episode. I wanted to give that heads up so you weren't blindsided by that. And I mentioned our lovely patrons, and speaking of those patrons, we have new patrons to welcome to the team. So shout out to Ak Ackerman, Janelle Halad, Christy, Sarah Schwartz, and Ashley Dramey. A happy belated birthday to Katie Firth and Merjaminez. A huge shout out to Amy Bernard, who upgraded their pledge, and an enormous shout out to Claire Challoner and Alicia McLaren, who are newest producer level patrons. They join the ranks of Leanne, Vicky, Aaron, Jesse, Natalie, Deborah, Clow, Frank, Marchismo, Tori, Samantha, Juan, Kieran, Rebecca, Abid, Caitlin, Rosemary, Jill, Marie, Lisa, Ariel, Romina, Kamel, Russell, Dustin, Audra, Eleanor, Sydney, Billy, Rossanne, Andrea, Nikita, Lala, Chelsea, Taylor, Lovekesh, Ali, Cassandra, Roxy, Emilia, Sean, Sarah, Ben, Rachel, Zachary, Jessica, Arno, Tiago, Daisy, Jessica, Orchid, Steve, Vivian, Takari, Haley, Marino, Moster, Pinky, Angelina, Ross, Marie, Lee, Alex, Brian, Caitlin, Finn, Mosin, Grace, Sammy, Raul, Ingen, Mari, Brianne, Alexandra, John, Jen, Noel, Tao, Emily, Michael, Robin, Patricia, Will, Liz, Mariah, Brandon, Sarah, Claire, Teal, Sina, Rory, Gloria, Sarah, Patrick, Ali, Cat, Hallie, Veronica, Kevin, Lada, Noah, Tracy, Lucinda, Carlos, Pam, Nikki, Colleen, Jennifer, Fride, Ivor, Naomi, Tyler, Summer, Heather, Vera, Kerry, Andrea, Topher, Ella, Anthony, Dead Cat Lady, Dave, David, Elisa, Lynn, Emily, Ryan, Cameron, Justin, Christine, Jacob, Toothless, Maya, Mark, Polly, Kimberly, Srujan, Brittany, Nita, Bavi, Tumnus, Remy, Matt, Sarah, Lauren, Nona, Kyle, Zena, Emily, Colleen, Harlan, Akanksha, Wouter, Shelby, Noelia, Reese, Adriana, Brian, Akamib, Washington, Jenny, Nikki, Kara, Dorcas, Courtney, Kine, Amanda, Sabrina, Lauren, and Can't I Potter? Who never try to twist open a bottle of beer that needs a bottle opener, or vice versa. If you want to be like one of these amazing patrons and get access to bonus episodes, exclusive merchandise, discounts on the merch store, my notes, you can go to patreon.com slash Potterless. But without further ado, let's get into episode 73 of Potterless, covering chapter 22 of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, guest starring my sister, Megan Fruhoff. <laughs> Episode of Potterless, the tale of a 26-year-old man reading the Harry Potter series for the very first time. My name is Mike Schubert. I'm that 26-year-old man, and I am joined back again in person, which is fun. We're in the Woo! same room by my beloved sister, Megan. Megan, how's it going? Oh, it's going great. It's Thanksgiving break, so mm -hmm. always a good time. <laughs> Your almost two-year-old daughter, my niece, is napping. Yes. A couple rooms over. Thank God. <laughs> Had to sneak in a recording <laughs> session while she's asleep. <laughs> but yeah. she's been very cute, and she was walking around with the Blu-ray of Harry Potter, yeah. singing very loudly, My My's Kaka, for Hermione's castle. <laughs> She was letting everyone know. <laughs> this is Hermione's castle, which it is. So we are here to discuss chapter 22 of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, which is called The Deathly Hallows. Yes! Crazy. Which <laughs> feels like a bit of a misnomer because all of last chapter is about the Deathly Hallows. And this chapter was really just about like Harry being dumb about the Deathly Hallows. I feel like this chapter should have been called like Crazy Rant. <laughs> <laughs> or like aliens guy meme. It was just Harry going on a big old tangent of stuff and putting all these pieces together, getting yelled at by Hermione and then being a big dumb idiot and saying Voldemort. Yay, <laughs> Harry. <laughs> Not the trace. Just the one thing. Ugh. So when we last left our heroes, they had apparated out of there thanks to Hermione saving the day and they land in a field and right off the bat, they hit the ground and Hermione is already throwing all the defensive charms 
all over the place. She don't waste no time. No. And Ron and Harry are still trying to like get their bearings and she's just like, Pratego, you know, all of them like, They're like Coven what the Kentucky. Fuck just you know? happened? She's like, uh, a little help would be nice. <laughs> I th- it's great though. At this point, she's not even waiting for them to do anything. She just knows they're not gonna help her. She's like, uh, this again. <laughs> just gotta take charge. Just gotta take care of these guys. <laughs> So Ron and Harry are at first pissed off at Xenophilius, but Hermione takes satisfaction in knowing that it was, oh, sorry. Ron and Harry are at first pissed off at Xenophilius, obviously. Hermione, though, takes satisfaction in being correct that it wasn't a rumpin' horn, <laughs> which I love. But I was right. But so. I was right. <laughs> then Ron and Harry are in awe of Hermione, saying that she's an absolute genius, finally giving her the recognition that she's so deserves i know because she had this like all planned out Mm -hmm. first of all she throws the memory charm at lovegood before they get out of there oh i didn't even pick up on that yeah at luna's father she threw a memory charm at him so he forgets that it ever happened (sighs) genius then she has the genius idea to put ron under the cloak because Mm -hmm. he is supposed to be at home with spattergoid or whatever spattergroit yes (laughs) And she lets the Death Eaters get a glimpse of Ron or a glimpse of Harry Mm -hmm. so that they don't kill Luna. And it's just like the fact that she thought of this whole plan in literally five seconds Mm -hmm. is ingenious. And the boys have not figured it out yet. And she's like, "Okay, well, obviously I did this because of this and this because of this. And they're just like. Oh, and then Ron's like, <laughs> but what about you? And she's like, well, I already put a huge memory charm on my parents and they're in Australia mm-hmm. and I'm a, a mudblood, so they don't even care. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. And in Ron and Harry's defense, I didn't understand why she put the cloak over Ron until no, she explained it, I which didn't is really great. Either, but it's like, how did she think of that? Especially given that she's a teenager. If I was in the situation, all of my emphasis would just be on let's get the hell out of here, yes. not let's get the hell out of here in a very specific way so that all of our friends and family are okay. Yeah. Which she's is always oh, it's, thinking it's about so the people good. back at home. Yeah. And like Harry, I guess, I mean, he's kind of adopted the Weasley family mm-hmm. as his own and obviously thinks about Ginny, but he doesn't really have anyone else to think about mm-hmm. where obviously Ron has a lot of people and Hermione only really has her parents, but it's kind of the same thing where she's adopted all of these wizards families yeah. because she's spent so much time with them that she's like you know concerned for everybody's well-being and everybody else is like a little bit more selfish in their thinking which is a little bit of a maturity factor but at the same time it's like when you're in that high pressure situation the fact that you can think of other people is pretty incredible so. yeah it's fantastic. So you're right. Ron asks why she did what she did. Hermione explains the whole plan. Ron and Harry are impressed. And then Hermione starts to smile, but then is overcome with sadness when she recalls the Luna situation. She just hopes that the Death Eaters haven't killed her. And Ron brings up the sad fact that if she hasn't been killed, she's probably in Azkaban. And he's not sure how well she would fare in that prison. But Hermione says that Luna is strong and hopes she is teaching the inmates about Raxperts and Nargles, which is great. I could see a very fun just spin-off scene of Luna not being bothered by anything that happens in Azkaban and just like skipping through the hallways and everyone <laughs> being like very those, upset. She's so positive that mm-hmm. not even a Dementor could get her down. <laughs> yeah, like she would give a Dementor a kiss on the cheek yeah. and then it would explode. Yeah, but at the same time, it's kind of wild because her money's never really liked Luna all that much. Like they just have very different outlooks in life. And I yeah. just don't think they understand each other. Kind of like Mr. Lovegood was saying, you know, she's just a little bit closed minded as sure. far as like, you know, those beliefs and everything. So it's kind of a really big compliment that Hermione's paying to Luna say that she's stronger than you think and that she would be just fine in Azkaban. Yeah, I think Luna would be beyond fine. I, I think agree. She's going to be totally chill if she I is there. I think, once again, Hermione's right about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> a common theme in these books. Yes. So <laughs> surprise, her- surprise. <laughs> Hermione starts to say, I feel so sorry for Xenophilius if, but then Ron butts in, if he hadn't just tried to sell us out to the Death Eaters, which, true, super valid. <laughs> I don't want to feel Good any point. sort of pity for this dude. So Hermione is raving about the whole trip being a waste of time because she thinks that Xenophilius was just bullshitting the entire time, the whole story, all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Ron has her pump the brakes, though, because he cites the Chamber of Secrets was supposed to be myth too, wasn't it? But Hermione is insistent that the Deathly Hallows cannot be real. It's basically the 
stone, the resurrection stone. She just like <laughs> cannot get over that because even she recognizes that there are at least more powerful ones or like believed to be more powerful ones because it's documented in history. And she has this inkling towards the cloak as well, just recognizing that the cloak Harry has is pretty special. But like she just like cannot wrap her head around the resurrection stone being a thing. Yeah. And I get it. And even on the last episode of Potterless, I said that I don't know that I think it's real. Mm -hmm. But then Harry does go into this whole thing with the ring and the stone and all that. But yeah, it does seem a little unbelievable that you could have literally a stone that could bring people back from the dead. That seems like a bit much, but I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, like, there's ways to split your soul. I right? mean, there is a lot of magic that I guess is so uncommon. Mm -hmm. You know, like if there was a stone like this, it would probably take a lot of effort to make mm -hmm. just like the sorcerer's stone did. And it's kind of like, okay, well, there probably is only one in existence. Sure. And it was probably some, like, crazy powerful wizard and who would even want to make this and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, it it's a myth in some way. But at the same time, we don't really know the levels of their magic or if exactly. there are any because they say, you know, Voldemort pushes the levels, but then Harry pushes them in, like, a different unknown direction of, like, good magic versus bad magic. And it's just, like... That magic could exist. What, totally. If, are there any limits? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And that's what's frustrating me about the books is that it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around what is possible in this universe and what isn't just because there aren't strictly defined rules. Right. But my natural inclination is to side with Hermione and think, yeah, there's no way you could have a stone like this. But you're right. On the flip side, <laughs> it is confirmed true that we have someone that has split their soul maybe seven times over and <laughs> yeah. is hiding them in tiny trinkets. So if that's in play, a stone that brings people back from the dead, even if they're just hol holograms or whatever yeah, they are, yeah. like not even full if they're people. Veiled, yeah. Yeah. That doesn't seem that out of play. And I think what maybe makes Harry think this and what makes me think it as well. We basically have proof that the other two are real. We certainly have proof that the invisibility cloak, whether or not the cloak that Harry has is the cloak, we at least have proof that something that powerful can exist because yes. all the things that Xenophilia said are Harry's cloak. Correct. And then the super powerful wand thing, whether it's just one wand or just the story about having a wand that is more powerful in general than your standard wand, that makes sense and has been in history. So if we have signs that point to two of the three things being true, it's not that far out of the realm that all three would be true. Right. And I, I think the biggest thing is that Hermione, I think, goes a bit too far in thinking that there's no way for this to be true because at the end of the day, why else would Dumbledore give them this book with the marking over this particular story and then all the other stuff with the markings? Like, there doesn't seem to be any other reason for him to have given the book unless the Deathly Hallows, whether or not they're real, that they're important. So mm -hmm. I get what Hermione's saying later on this chapter where she says we can't get sidetracked, we can't get sidetracked, but clearly Dumbledore wants them to look into it at least. I mean, what do you think? It is the title of the book. Right? So. Yeah, come on, Hermione, <laughs> read the book. <laughs> you think this is the first and last time we hear about it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's not Harry Potter and the horcruxes that they have to still destroy. <laughs> <laughs> so Hermione is insistent that the Deathly Hallows aren't real. Harry brings up his parents showing up when his wand connected with Voldemort's in the fourth book. Hermione says that those weren't really them, and Harry reminds her that the girl in the story wasn't really there either, so... Yeah, exactly. We're not, like, bringing back their corpses and their bodies, so that makes it just, like, a little bit more believable, mm -hmm. like, that it's mostly, like, the presence of their soul, maybe? Sure. I don't know. Hermione looks perturbed, and Harry decides to change the subject. She doesn't enjoy talking about death, and especially because anytime you talk about mm -hmm. that story, you're talking about a man who eventually committed suicide. So not sitting super well with Hermione. Yeah. Harry quickly changes the subject to asking about Peverell, asks if she knows anything about him. And she says that she found him in a genealogy textbook, and the Peverells apparently were one of the first families to go extinct on the male line. And this ignites a Jimmy Neutron brain blast in Harry Potter's brain when he remembers that Marvelo Gaunt claimed that he was a descendant of the Peverells. Gaunt said that the ring that he had had the Peverells crest on it. And I totally forgot about all of this. Mm -hmm. And it seems a bit of a stretch that Harry Potter, who can't remember what he had for breakfast that morning, will have this big realization of all this stuff. Yeah, so. but to Harry... <laughs> 
these trips in the pensive were really important to him. Mm -hmm. And especially now that Dumbledore has passed on, he's probably remembering things he did with Dumbledore more. Yeah, and And thinking about them. Yeah, so maybe this comes to light. And he's still probably looking for clues. Like, they, well, I guess they just found the locket. But still, like, he's still trying to figure out what all the Horcruxes are. So in his mind, wouldn't you be replaying back and forth like all of the times you went through the pensive and if there are any other clues out there and that kind of thing. So Mm -hmm. the fact that he remembers it before the reader isn't so far-fetched to me. Yeah, I can see it. But Harry does have a sudden clarity where he remembers everything. That's true. (laughs) That's a little less believable, but okay. (laughs) So when Harry brings this up, Harry and Hermione are thinking that it wasn't actually the crest on the ring, but instead the Deathly Hallows logo. And at this point, I remembered that that ring also had a stone. So maybe the stone on the ring is the resurrection stone. And of course, Harry and Hermione then bring this up. (laughs) Ron wonders if it will still work given that Dumbledore destroyed the Horcrux out of it. And Hermione is furious at this point that it isn't real and Harry is just trying to fit everything into this pretty little narrative that they have constructed. Mm -hmm. Harry's mind starts racing, though. He starts thinking about conquering Voldemort with all of the Hallows in this big showdown of Hallows versus Horcruxes, which seems a bit strange since the Horcruxes aren't weapons of any kind. They just have his soul in them. True. This is where Harry's brain goes to, is straight on to defeating Voldemort, being the whole conqueror and vanquisher of death, etc., etc. Harry goes full on Charlie from It's Always Sunny and tries to connect all of the dots. And he says that in the note that Lily wrote to Sirius, she mentioned that Dumbledore had the cloak in Godric's Hollow. So Harry uses this fact to say that why else would Dumbledore be in Godric's Hollow with this cloak? Dumbledore could just use a charm. He wouldn't need it. So clearly it's from the Peveril. So in turn, Harry is a descendant of the third brother. I think it's funny that Harry points out that he's a descendant of the third brother and not the other two because he only wants to be associated with the good one that's even though the other two are brothers well technically you're a descendant of all the but yeah Yeah. he's carried through that (laughs) line i guess Mm -hmm. (laughs) harry's going on 100 miles an hour and says that dumbledore must have left him the ring inside of the snitch because harry hasn't opened it yet right it's written on the snitch i open at the close and the whole thing with it not opening was because snitches only open if you catch it with your hand and harry caught it with his mouth so they have flesh memory Mm -hmm. and so it'll only open for the person that had caught it like they use a new snitch every game whatever Mm -hmm. like once it's touched it's contaminated kind Uh of thing so it didn't open in front of scrimger because he was holding it with his hand Mm -hmm. and then when he put it in his mouth that's when it said i open at the close so i think dumbledore like bewitched it Uh. in a way that instead of opening it says this writing like Dumbledore messed with it yeah yeah so my thought here because Harry hasn't been able to open it and he's trying to figure out how to open it I'm wondering if with the whole flesh memory thing because sure Dumbledore's probably tinkered with it but I wonder if Dumbledore gave it to someone else to touch with their hand and then If that person touches it again, it'll open. Maybe Dumbledore has never actually touched it with his hand. He's only accioed it, levitated it, something, or always worn gloves or whatever. And then maybe Harry has to find a person to touch it. Maybe it's an order of the Phoenix member. And when they touch it, it'll open and then he can get the ring out because Harry has not been able to do it. Because that was my first thought was, oh, yeah, put it in your mouth. But then, right, that's what got him to make it realize that it has written, I open it, the close on it. So... I don't know that Harry's going to be able to open it unless there's something else. And later in the chapter, Harry tries all this other stuff, like speaking parcel tongue to it and all these other shenanigans. But I guess my my guess would be that Dumbledore has given it to someone to touch and then Harry's got to find that person. And then when they touch it, it'll open and then he can get the ring. Because we can't forget that the ring is the, or the stone, not the ring. The the stone is the hallow that Harry desired the most. Mm -hmm. Like that's the one he wants because he wants to bring all of these people back that he is missing. Mm -hmm. So Harry is only halted by realizing that Voldemort must be after the elder wand, which 
It's pretty obvious. Come on, yeah. Harry. <laughs> Harry Good thinks- job, Harry, for figuring that. <laughs> I mean, I did feel pretty proud of myself last time for figuring it out, but in retrospect, the writing was on the wall. <laughs> Harry thinks that since Voldemort was an orphan, there's no chance that anyone read him Beetle the Bard. So clearly the hallows have to be true because why else would Voldemort believe them? Is he saying that orphanages can't have books? Like what? No, no, no. <laughs> no. He's saying like, to Hermione's point when she was explaining it to Ron, like he went to a muggle orphanage. So they wouldn't have Oh, so they wouldn't have wizard books. Book. Yeah. Oh, so he's saying okay. like, oh, Voldemort's in the same place that Hermione and I were, where we were never read these mm, nursery rhymes okay. because we grew up amongst muggles. Right. But yeah, right. I mean, he makes a good point. He says at some point that if Voldemort knew that the Hallows existed, he might not have ever created the Horcruxes. He probably just would have been on this quest to find the Hallows. And if he went through the extent, like we assume the ring is perhaps the stone. Mm -hmm. If he knew that was a Hollow, would he really make it a Horcrux? Oh yeah, right. Ah, that is good. So basically with this line of reasoning, Voldemort only has heard about the wand because there are other stories in history about the wand. So he's solely caring about that and is solely focused on that. Not realizing it's like one of three. Right. Yes. That would also make sense because I feel like it's pretty well known that Harry has the invisibility cloak. At least there are some- his friends. But, but, but like I guess Moody Snape knows it. Knows. Doesn't Snape know it too? Yeah, yeah, but Snape knows it because he knows like James had it and all this stuff. I don't think Snape would consider that like- important enough to tell Voldemort. Right. So, But also know. it could be a thing if we are believing that Snape is a double agent, which I believe that he is, yeah. he could know and understand the importance of the Deathly Hallows and is purposefully not telling Voldemort so that Harry has it. Like that That's could be true. justification for why Snape, I don't remember when in the books, but there was a time where Harry was wearing it and he got the vibe that Snape kind of knew Harry was there. Yeah. And I think that maybe Snape is purposefully not taking it away from Harry and Maybe. because he could have, you know, if he really wanted just to get it out of Harry's hand, I'm sure he could have done it. But right. he's probably, if he's being a very good double agent, is on purpose letting Harry have this thing so he can be saved from Voldemort. Yeah. So, no, that's a good point. Mm. Okay, yeah. Good point about saying that it's because he went to a muggle orphanage. Because I don't think Harry made that distinction. I was like, what the heck? Yeah, they can have books, Harry. <laughs> you <laughs> asshole. Yeah, they're allowed to have literature in an orphanage. <laughs> so even after Harry lays all of this out, Hermione still doesn't believe him. And he doesn't want him to get sidetracked from what she believes is the real quest, finding the Horcruxes. She asks Ron if... He believes Harry and Ron kind of fence sits for a bit, mm -hmm. says that he does believe Harry, but he ultimately agrees with Hermione that even if Harry's correct, the Horcruxes are more important. And that's what Dumbledore's main mission for them was. So they should focus on that. And that's fair. Yeah, super fair. I think Ron makes the best point here. He's like, I do think Harry's right. But at the same time, let's go after the things that are hard to find that we know exist rather than the things that are hard to find that we aren't sure if they're real or just a fairy tale. And at the same time, like Harry realizes like I have one, maybe two. And technically he has the most important one. Right. And Voldemort is also going after the third. So you don't really want to find it. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, you're kind of like, okay, well, if you want to hunt him, go ahead. But you're like, there's only one left. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> what Hermione probably should have done is when Harry goes on this whole thing about, oh, the ring is inside the snitch. She should have just said, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm, because then you wouldn't look for it. I know. <laughs> you're like, you already have it, Harry? Very good, Harry. <laughs> good you boy. have good it. <laughs> Uh, and then he can just be off on the side trying to make it open all of the time with all of his little things. Then Hermione and Ron can focus on the task at hand. Honestly, probably best case scenario. Mm -hmm. Just get Harry out of the room. So the next day, they pack up the tent and Harry and Hermione are still at odds about the whole situation. Ron takes the lead in the let's find the Horcrux charge, giving them ideas for where they could look, suggestions of where else they might be, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He goes on to reveal that the radio broadcast that he's been trying to tune into is called Potter Watch, and I bet that that's the name of a Harry Potter podcast. I looked it up. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, finally in March, Ron cracks the code for one of the broadcasts, and they tune in. 
And the first thing that they learn is that Lee Jordan is the host, which I think is really cool. I love yes, Lee Jordan. I'm glad he's too. not gone. His code name is River, which I don't get. I don't either. Okay. All of the other code names are pretty bad because they're obvious to get who it is, but, but I don't know like, River. I don't think it really matters. Yeah. No, I was just wondering because the other two are very obvious. Very obvious. I was wondering <laughs> what Lee Jordans had to do. Uh, oh, maybe like the Jordan River. Oh. That totally makes sense. But I can wait, see where that. even is the Jordan River? Isn't that uh, like a Jesus thing? Yeah, I think it's the in Jordan. Israel. Jordan River. It's a river in the Middle East that goes through the Sea of Galilee. It is in Israel. Yeah. Oh, which is very fun. When you go on Wikipedia, it has it listed as Jordan, Israel, Syria, State of Palestine, Middle East, which a lot of fun buzzwords there. <laughs> <laughs> so his code name is River, and there's also someone by the code name Royal and Romulus. And right off the bat, I wrote on my notes, okay, so that's Lupin. Uh, I was kind of mad at not picking up that Royal is Kingsley Shacklebolt. I, I was pretty upset at myself. <laughs> but the first thing that they do in the broadcast is recap all of the people who have confirmed deaths. So one of the first names that they confirmed to be dead is Ted Tonks, which makes me really sad because he was such a sweetheart. I know. Dirk Cresswell and a goblin named Gornuck are also dead. And I was thinking, these names sound so familiar. And then they reveal that Dean Thomas and a second goblin may have escaped. And then I remember this is that crew that Harry overheard, but he didn't actually have any interaction with them, right? He just kind of heard right. them while they were looking for stuff. Lee Jordan then goes on to report that Batilda Bagshot is officially dead and has been for months. And the order is able to determine that it was at the hand of dark magic. And at this point, he passes it over to Royal, who is Kingsley. I feel very stupid for not realizing <laughs> that it would be Kingsley. It's okay. He's We're a, just glad he's alive. <laughs> yeah, honestly, at the end of the day, I'm just glad Kingsley is doing all right. He's yes. the best. <laughs> Shout out to all of the Potterless listeners who have had pets and named them Kingsley Shacklebolt after one of the earliest episodes of Potterless. <laughs> I said more pets should be named Kingsley Shacklebolt. Someone <laughs> just tweeted that they found a stray cat and they fostered him and took him in. And then they got him little tags that say Kingsley. Kingsley Shacklebolt. Oh, <laughs> it's so cute. So cute. Oh, it's adorable. And Kingsley Shacklebolt is the official dog of Potter. That's the first pet to be named Kingsley, and he's the cutest. Very nice. <laughs> so Kingsley says that muggles still aren't aware of Voldemort, even though a bunch of people have been dying recently. He says that many wizards and witches have been risking their lives to save them, and he implores listeners to do the same. Just do whatever you can to keep more muggles alive, which I think is very sweet of them. He then goes on to say, prompted by Lee Jordan, he says, what do you think of this whole wizard's first thing that some people think about? And Kingsley says that wizard's first is one step shy of pure blood's first, which is one step shy of being a death eater. And this is scarily parallel to our lovely president, Donald Trump, who tweets America first in all caps, like every third day of the yeah. week. And America first, I don't know if people realize this, that's stuff that the KKK used to say. That was like one of their chants. Oh, Jesus. It, not great. No, so no the well, nothing he does is great. So let's just like <laughs> let's accept just move and move on. Yeah, he, but the parallels he are... He can like do no right. Yeah, the parallels are terrifying. So they pass it over to Romulus. And at this point, Hermione shushes Ron and says, we know it's Lupin because every time someone else is coming on, when first Lee Jordan comes up, Ron's like, it's Lee Jordan. And then when... <laughs> they, Kingsley. Yeah, when they pass it over to Kingsley, he's like, it's Kingsley. And Hermione's like, yeah, we get it. <laughs> we know know what their voices sound like. Yeah, we've met these people before. So she butts in before Ron can even say anything about Lupin. He's like, I know Roman history. <laughs> Obviously it's Lupin. <laughs> so Lupin confirms that Harry Potter is still alive and his proof is basically uh, if they killed Harry, they'd be making a big deal about it. And you're like, oh, true. Oh, true. Obviously. <laughs> so Lee asks Lupin what he would say to Harry if he were listening right now. And he says that Harry should trust his instincts because they are nearly always right and harry shoots hermione a look and hermione claps back with nearly always right <laughs> 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 yeah, very good ron informs the squad that bill told him that lupin is now back living with tonks and that she's getting pretty big so this is nice that lupin has gotten his head on straight and is being a responsible father like he needs to be yes lee reports then that hagrid almost got arrested for hosting a support harry potter party which is such at a Hogwarts, hagrid thing which is do. so cute and not smart, but very but Hagrid. So Hagrid. <laughs> it's very <laughs> on brand. So they then call on a new correspondent who they want to call Rodin. And I was very
very upset that they had Peter Pettigrew involved for a hot minute. Yes. But then the new correspondent butts in and says that he wants to be called Rapier and they realize it's Fred. And for a brief second, they're like, but is it George? <laughs> no, 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 it's Fred. <laughs> so P will be giving an update on Voldemort, who he is calling Chief Death Eater. And they were talking about Voldemort, not Lucius, right? Yes. Okay, because when they said Chief Death Eater, that felt like a Lucius thing to me. But No, Lu- you know Lucius has been like severely right, yeah, he's been demoted. Like kicked out. Yeah, okay. He was in Azkaban for a little bit, and then I think they broke him out. Broke him out. And he's basically like totally shitlisted mm-hmm. from Voldemort. Because right. he done goofed at the ministry. Yeah, doesn't doesn't he already like wasn't one of the first scenes they were all sitting around his table? Yes, that was the first chapter. And like he made Malfoy, Mr. Malfoy, give him his wand. Oh yeah, yeah. right. So he's like totally blacklisted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're all staying in his house. He has to like feed them and clean up after them all, and he's wandless. So mm-hmm. he's like the he's worse. Bottom of the than, total yeah, bowl. Total bottom. Even worse <laughs> than Peter Pettigrew, who Ugh. is basically Snape's slave right now. So <laughs> not great. <laughs> so Fred will be giving his update on Chief Death Eater and he's cracking jokes the whole time, which is great. And Harry realizes it's the first time that he's laughed in months. Mm-hmm. At one point Lee brings up to Fred that Voldemort has been seen abroad in other countries in Europe. And Fred's like, oh yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you take a vacation after all the hard work he's been doing? <laughs> <laughs> but then he warns that people shouldn't be relaxing because Voldemort can move faster than Severus Snape confronted with shampoo. (laughs) Which (laughs) I love that they will never drop that Snape has greasy hair. I know. The passwords for this broadcast every time is a name of an Order of the Phoenix member and this broadcast it was Albus. They say that next broadcast is Mad-Eye and at first I thought this was not smart because it seems like a really obvious password system but then I realized that The whole point is for people to listen to it. So I guess they want the passwords to be easy. Yeah. And if that's a pattern, like both of them have passed as well. So they Mm -hmm. could be like all old order members that have passed away. Or they just cycle through order members and you just have to keep guessing it every time. Because because even I was because I was even thinking that even if a Death Eater listened to this broadcast, it's not that bad. No, it's not. They're not saying anything ridiculous. They're just giving the true news and they move every time. So they're probably going into it knowing that there's going to be one Death Eater listening to almost any every broadcast anyway. Right. So they don't have to worry about having the password stuff. If anything, that just having some sort of password might protect their location. But my initial thought was these seem like really easy passwords to crack, but it's I probably it's by design. Thing. Yeah. And that's the other thing too. It's like they don't nobody knows when when the next broadcast will be. Right. So you could be like filtering through these passwords like Ron was every mm-hmm. day and he's just like saying a bunch of names. Mm -hmm. I guess. I don't even know how you do it. Mm -hmm. And they did note at the top of the broadcast that they had been gone for a while because of Death Eater pressure. So it could be that they haven't broadcast since Ron started trying. True. So it might not even be that Ron wasn't smart. He could have just been trying every single order member every single day and they just haven't done a broadcast since. So true. So that's the end of the broadcast and Ron turns to Harry and Hermione and says, pretty good, isn't it? (laughs) Which is great. (laughs) Harry and Hermione are very impressed. Hermione thinks it's very brief of them to be doing it. Harry is fueled and fired up, and this leads to him being very, very stupid. Mm. And he brings up that, oh, clearly Voldemort is looking for the wand, and he says Voldemort, and Hermione even tries to interrupt him and stop him from saying it, but he gets too far ahead of himself and says Voldemort out loud, and the sneakoscope immediately goes off, and before they can even do anything or put up any charms or hexes or whatever, they hear the voice of what we presume to be Death Eaters saying that they should come out with their hands up. They are surrounded by 12 people, or at least 12 wands pointed at you, and and we don't care who we curse. And that's the end of the chapter. <laughs> Pretty intense yeah, cliffhanger. Yeah, super intense cliffhanger. But I don't know. How do you feel about this one? Are there <gasps> are there any things that we haven't touched upon that you wanted to bring up? I know you have multiple pages of notes in front of you. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> good, 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 good. Pass, Mike. Slow down. Grab the wall. Before we get into those burning questions from Megan, let's take a little bit of time for Wingardium at Ridosa. <laughs> Thank you. 
Today's episode of Powderless is brought to you by DoorDash. Let's say you're Satan, and you're waiting in your secret hideout with your pet snake who's in a floating orb, and you're waiting for your arch nemesis, who is a teenager, to come so that you can murder him. Well, you're going to be waiting there for a very long time because he's so incompetent, and you'll probably get hungry and need some other things delivered to you so that you don't have to leave. Well... Who can help with that? DoorDash can help with that. DoorDash connects you to all of your favorite restaurants in your city. Ordering is super simple. You just download the DoorDash app and choose whatever you want to eat, and your Dasher brings it right to you wherever you are, even if it's the Shrieking Shack. You can order from local mom and pop places, you can order from big chains, whatever you are looking for, DoorDash can dash it to your door. And as a Potterless listener, you can get $5 off your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code Potterless. Again, that's $5 off your first order. All you got to do is download the DoorDash app and use the promo code Potterless in the app. I have used DoorDash when having late night parties and the only open pizza establishments are like 15 minute walks away. I don't want to do that, so I will let the pizza come to me. Instead, it's fantastic. You don't have to worry about the food. DoorDash can bring it to you. Again, your promo code is Potterless and you can get $5 off your first order from DoorDash of $15 or more so that you can be well fed as you wait to destroy your nemesis today. Today's episode of Potterless is also brought to you by Stitch Fix. Let's say you live in New York City, and their weather is run by a demon who likes to make things very cold and wet and gross, and then all of a sudden flip a switch and say, hello, it's 80 degrees and very warm now. Well, if you're like me, you've been wearing pants exclusively for the past few months, and now it is too hot, especially when you're on the hot, muggy, humid, steamy subway. Well, you need some new shorts and shirts that are appropriate for this warmer weather. What better way to do that, then Stitch Fix, because you don't want to leave your apartment and go out into the sun and get all that building heat on you. Gross. You can stay in the comfort of your apartment next to your air conditioner and fan while you let Stitch Fix bring weather-appropriate clothes directly to your door. Stitch Fix is fantastic. You get set up with a personal stylist, a real human being, not some sort of computer program, and they help you pick exactly what clothes you want. You fill out a quiz online, you talk about your fit and style preferences, you get to vote yes and no on clothes that they offer to you. It's like Tinder, but for clothes, super fun. And then when you're going to get your box, you can write a little note to your stylist if you want something specific. I have gotten some great clothes from Stitch Fix. Kelly just got a new jacket and pair of shoes that she absolutely loves. Hey, Kelly, how much do you love your new items? I love my jacket and my new shoes. Thanks, Kelly. I'm glad. And you Potterless listeners can get 25% off your box when you keep everything in your box if you create your account at stitchfix.com slash Potterless. So they'll send you a box that has the return label shipping packet all set up you only pay for what you keep but if you keep all five things and create your account at stitchfix.com slash potterless you get 25 percent off your box which can amount to huge savings so sign up for stitch fix fill out that quiz and get some very appropriate clothes so that the building heat of new york doesn't murder you today okay so i guess There's a few questions I had for you. All right. Yeah, let's do it. So Ron sees both sides. He thinks they should focus on Horcruxes, but he likes the idea of the Hallows. We're circling back Mm -hmm. to the middle of the chapter because I think that's the more important part than the radio broadcast. No offense. Yes. (laughs) The radio broadcast is just like, here's some people that are dead. Don't make bad choices. And then Harry makes a bad choice. (laughs) He's like, oops. I said Voldemort. Yeah. I mean, they even had a whole broadcast where they're calling him You Know Who and Chief Death Eater. But that's the not, whole theme. <laughs> oh, Harry. But that's not uncommon. Like, yeah, it's pretty yeah. uncommon for people to say Voldemort. So that probably didn't even phase him. Sure, 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 sure. Because he's basically the only one who says it anyway. Him and Dumbledore. Yeah, I think Hermione says it now too. But Ron. She used to, but not yeah, anymore well, ever since well, Ron brought it up. Because she's smart. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, your and question. Before she says it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I feel like Ron sees both sides. Mm-hmm. Hermione's like, fuck the Deathly Hollows. That's not a thing. Mm-hmm. Horcruxes only. And Harry Potter's like, Horcruxes are a thing of the past. <laughs> <laughs> All I care about are the Deathly Hollows. This will be instantly dated by the time that this episode releases, but we're recording in November and this is very topical. Harry to the Horcruxes says, thank you, next. <laughs> but everyone will be like, oh my God, wow, come on, Mike. <laughs> Ariana Grande is onto her next thing. <laughs> so where do you stand on that spectrum? 
of Hermione Ron Harry. <laughs> who is right mm-hmm. or who would you follow? I would follow Ron here because Ron's whole stance is basically Harry is right that these things are real, but we okay. can't focus on them. And okay. that's and that's what I'm feeling. And, it, and it's like I said even earlier in this episode that – you still have this task you need to complete. Okay. You're not going to beat Voldemort to the wand because that's all he cares about. And he's already got a head start trying to find it. So he's probably going to do yeah, it. Also, you don't like want to run into diving, him. Yeah. So it's not worth it. You also might have the stone with you. So I think Ron's got the right frame of mind here where it's probably important to keep in mind that the Deathly Hallows might be real or there's at least a chance that they're real. I don't think you can completely throw them out like Hermione's doing, but they should be more focused on the Horcruxes because they know that they're real. They know that if they can destroy them, they will weaken Voldemort. And that's important because Harry ultimately will have to duel Voldemort. So you might as well make him as weak as you can before you confront him or he confronts you. I don't think they necessarily like make him weaker. I think they just mentioned that for someone with the soul split up, every time you destroy one, it's going to be weaker and weaker. Or at least if they destroy all of them, he'll be a I shattered thought, man. I, yeah, well, okay, that's fair. Because he can never put his pieces of his soul back in yeah. together. Okay, so that makes sense. But I I just was under the impression, like, you can't kill him until they're all gone too. True, yeah. yeah. Ultimately, you have been given this task by Dumbledore. And... Dumbledore never brought up the Hallows before. If they were more important than the Horcruxes, he would have talked about that or he would have told Harry that his cloak is a Deathly Hallow. True. But yeah, we do know Dumbledore likes to be cute with stuff and not necessarily tell you things straight up. Harry mentions it because Hermione says the same thing that you're saying. Mm -hmm. So clearly you're siding a little bit with Hermione. Sure. She says... If the Deathly Hallows really existed and Dumbledore knew about them, knew that the person who possessed all three of them would be Master of Death, Harry, why wouldn't he have told you? And he said, but you said it, Hermione. You've got to find out about them for yourself. It's a quest. So I feel like, yeah, he could have told them, but like that's not in his nature, as we know. Yeah. And he did implant the book. True, true. Yeah. So I'm not disagreeing. Like... Yeah, I guess you my whole... You still think the Horcruxes are a hierarchy. Sure. And that is fair. That's yeah. what I want to know. What's your hierarchy? Yeah, it's what are hor- you doing first? Yeah, Horcruxes should be first and okay. should be the focus. And then Hallows after. Especially because they might have the two that they're going to get. True. Technically, they have more Hallows than Horcruxes. And they have the, If what Harry thinks is true is true. Yeah, and they have the most important one. Because if anything, we've learned that the wand is the least important one. So let Voldemort yeah. find that one. And you've got at least the invisibility cloak, which kept death at bay. So mm-hmm. just get those Horcruxes done. You've yeah. got a job to do. Finish it. <laughs> so true. And then when they're reading the snitch and it says, I open at the close, what does that mean to you? <sighs> I mean, not officially, but it might be at the end of the book. <laughs> <laughs> I open at the close of the book. <laughs> um, I open at the close. I feel like it might be the end of something. Maybe if they destroy all the Horcruxes, it will open. Okay. So yeah. Because we do have to keep in mind. At the close of your previous task, it will open. <laughs> that's true. Because you do have to keep in mind that Dumbledore inscribed that. That's not part of the Hollow's quest. That's right. something Dumbledore did. So mm-hmm. it could definitely pertain to the horcruxes yeah so i guess that'd be my only that'd be my only guess i don't think the close is location based i don't think that it's a you have to bring it to a particular place and then it'll open i think my guess would be it is gonna open when you destroy all the horcruxes and you think somebody else might have a hand in helping him open that yes i think so do you have a prediction on who that would be it's gotta be someone that's alive it's not gonna be grindelwald (laughs) It's not going to be serious. I don't think it would be Lupin. I I don't know who it would be. That's so tricky. I feel like it has to be someone that is like far away and safe somewhere. But I can't really think of who fits that description. And I don't know if there's any person that they haven't found yet or that we've learned about that they haven't met yet. (sighs) Ooh, my guess would be Snape. Okay. That'll just be my guess just because at some point, 
Harry's going to have to learn that Snape is a double agent. Well, I think, doesn't he already know that? Yeah, well, like, Harry doesn't believe it. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Harry thinks he's a double agent in the other direction. And that could also be true. Yes. We don't know. Yeah. So I think that at some point, Snape will either tell him or someone will tell him uh, somehow Harry's going to learn that Snape is a good guy. And we have to learn. I mean, just by the virtue of me knowing that people don't hate Snape and that he does the always thing or whatever, mm -hmm. that he has to do something redeemable when he hasn't yet. Okay. So I think that at some point when Snape becomes a good guy, <laughs> which hopefully better happen soon. <laughs> still waiting. Yeah, still <laughs> two thirds of the way through the book. It hasn't happened. Um, I think at some point when he does that, maybe he did it. And because I'm always thinking that Dumbledore and Snape have had a bunch of conversations on the side about stuff, just because if Snape is a double agent, they have to have had a lot of talk. And this is something that I've believed, even with how quickly Snape killed Dumbledore without any hesitation. Mm -hmm. I think that they had at least talked about that possibility where Dumbledore had told Snape, look, I'm at a point now where you're more important as a double agent than me being alive. If we're ever in a situation where you have to kill me and maybe it's the Malfoy thing specific or just in general, like kill me yeah. if it means keeping you in your position of trust. So I think my guess would be Snape. And at some point, Snape could come to Harry and maybe lay it all out. Like, look, I've been mean to you, but let's come on, trust me, please. Yeah. <laughs> and then touch it, it opens, et cetera, et cetera. Because if Harry is going to get to the point where he is dueling Voldemort, which is what I'm guessing this whole series will culminate in. You think? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's a far-fetched theory. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think at that point, it's Snape won't have to be a double agent anymore if it's coming to the point where it's final showdown and one of them's going to die. At that point, Snape can go to Harry and be like, look, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know why the Resurrection Stone would matter at that point. Maybe mm -hmm. they use it and Dumbledore comes back and he gives them advice or he talks to his parents or Sirius or someone. But I would guess Snape. Just because of him being important, him not having interaction with Harry yet. And I think that he and Dumbledore have this deep side relationship that we haven't really known about just because they've kept it so down low and Harry just hates Snape so freaking much. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have one more question. Good. Yeah. And I don't exactly remember this, but like voldemort's going after the wand and we've yeah. seen like glimpses of where he's investigating right he's got a gregorovich grindelwald is somehow involved he's yeah. grinda involved do you know where the wand is <laughs> location wise yeah Ooh. do we know what country wasn't he looking in italy or something i don't know when i was wondering if you know he was on the coast of somewhere where he was looking for gregorovich i want to say it was italy but i'm not sure i don't exactly remember okay um where would it be? The Elder Wand. I really don't know that I have a guess because if what we are learning about the Elder Wand to be true is that it just keeps getting passed on from wizard to wizard because they keep killing whoever has the Elder Wand and mm -hmm. then moving it along. And Xenophilus didn't know who would have had it last. So my guess is that Grindelwald would have had it last. Okay. And he went to Durmstrang, which is in yeah. Romania, Bulgaria? Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Or at least Crumb is Bulgarian. Right. I don't know if he went to Durmstrang. He went to Durmstrang. I just don't know where Durmstrang is. Oh, okay. Is. Yes, where it's in Bulgaria. Is Durmstrang? Bulgaria. Uh, somewhere in Western Russia or Northern Europe. Oh, okay. So my guess is that Grindelwald had it last. Because do we know when Grindelwald died? I mean, he's in the Fantastic Beast movies, which are yeah. in like the 1920s. What we know about Grindelwald and the Wand is that through Voldemort's eyes, Harry saw Voldemort legilimens Grigorovich. And in Grigorovich's mind, he saw Grindelwald stealing a wand from him and then climbing out a window or whatever. Okay. So the proof that we have last seen, if this wand is the Elder Wand, is that Grindelwald had it last. I don't know okay. where Grindelwald hung out, but oh, hmm, maybe where's that prison? What's that prison thing? Yeah. Where he ended I up? I forget what it, the Wizard name of it is. Prison Grindelwald. Nuremgard. Nur yes. Nurmengard. So you think it's there? I think it's in Nurmengard, which okay. according to Harry Potter, uh, I don't want to look at, where is it location-wise? I'm block I'm literally blocking the text part of Harry Potter Wiki with my hand just to try to see the location. It says it's in Austria. So okay. my guess would be Austria. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> just you telling me that story proves something mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily have to kill the previous owner. You no, you just have it. to steal it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would guess just because of proof, the only proof that we have 
is that Grindelwald had it last. So I would guess Grindelwald, I think he's dead. I assume he's dead. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I would guess that maybe in, Ner I don't know if Nurmengard is still operational, but they just mentioned that he was locked up there. So I'm maybe sure it is. I mean, like yeah, the still... area of wizards that like Hogwarts serves is mm -hmm. the area of wizards that like Azkaban serves. So it's sure. almost like other areas. Norman Guard need... yeah, is not... for Durmstrang yeah, people. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's like not everyone in the world who is magic is an Azkaban. <laughs> <laughs> that would also be a bad strategy if you've ever seen the movie Con Air. You yeah. can't put all of the bad people in the same place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it wouldn't surprise me if the prison was still operational. <laughs> what, you think it is or is not operational? I think it is. Okay, yes. So we know that Dumbledore locked up Grindelwald in Nurmengard. So my guess would be that when they put him in Nurmengard, they put the wand in some sort of safe vault in there. I think the wand would either be in Nurmengard or in some sort of vault in Gringotts. Because okay. that's the only two places I can think where a high security presence exists. Okay. And we can't trust Azkaban because they've already broken out a bunch of Death Eaters from sure. there. So my guess would it would either be in some sort of safe system in Nurmengard or in Gringotts. Okay. But I'm not sure. I've always had the suspicion that Gringotts is going to get broken into on a serious level, just because in the very first book, Hagrid's like, the only place more secure than Hogwarts is Gringotts, or the vice so versa. So think that's why it gets broken into? Oh, that could be it. Yeah, I think it needs to get broken into for some reason. And I would think that the wand being there would make sense, just because you'd put it in some crazy, crazy high protection vault. But that wouldn't explain why Voldemort is abroad looking for it, unless... He thinks it's in Nurmengard. He gets to Nurmengard. Or because because technically he went to Grigorovich thinking that Grigorovich had it. Then right. he saw He's still on a wild he's, goose. Chase exactly. For it. So he might have done exactly my train of thought in this episode where <laughs> he <laughs> thought it was Grigorovich, but then Grigorovich had the memory of Grunewald stealing it. So then he goes to Nurmengard thinking it's there, but then maybe he'll find something else that maybe Dumbledore relocated it to this crazy high security vault in Gringotts, and then he's gonna destroy Gringotts or whatever. So, yeah. Okay. So yeah, my guesses would be Nurmengard or Gringotts. I think Gringotts would make more sense. Okay. And I can't take full credit for the Gringotts breaking out thing just because I've been to Harry Potter world and there's a big dragon on top of Gringotts. I don't know the context of the dragon being on top of Gringotts, but it is there, which makes me think that Voldemort uses a dragon to break into Gringotts. So I can't like sit on some throne and be like, look at me, I'm a big genius boy for predicting this. <laughs> but I have seen the big dragon on Gringotts be like, what's that there for? And then all my friends say, no, we can't tell you. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it's it. It's leftover from the fourth movie. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just there for effect. It's it's not canon. So <laughs> that would be my guess is that it's in there. Okay. And it also just makes sense because of high security put it there. And we've already thought that the sword might be there, but the sword isn't there. So, so something's got to be in Green Guys. Yeah. But I was, my eyebrow was cocked immediately in the first book when Hagrid was like, it's the safest place ever. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, hmm, mm, okay. Is it? <laughs> so yeah. was Azkaban. <laughs> right, yeah. So was Hogwarts. Both yeah. of those places have been broken into. Wait a few times. Yeah, not so great. <laughs> okay, and final question. Do you know what the what all the Horcruxes are yet? Or do you have predictions? I don't, but I was surprised that the Ravenclaw bust thing didn't come more into play. I was really my ears perked up when they were at Xenophilius's and there was a bust of Ravenclaw wearing that headdress thing mm -hmm. just because I thought something there Ravenclaw just being a founder and Dumbledore in the past mentioning that the founders items are stuff that Voldemort would have used so I still believe that the Hufflepuff cup probably has something in there yeah I don't know if the bus got destroyed or if the headdress is actually something useful, but I do think something Ravenclaw-y would be it. I do believe Dumbledore's suspicion that Nagini is a Horcrux. Okay. Because I don't know that you can make a person a Horcrux, but making an animal seems like maybe that's the limit of a Horcrux. Mm -hmm. But then now with the Fantastic Beast movie, we know that Nagini's a Korean woman the whole time, which seems ridiculous. Let's just not think yeah, about let's that just right not, now. <laughs> yeah, apparently also in those movies. That's new to all well, of us. Okay, but 
apparently in the second movie, the one that just came out, apparently McGonagall's in it, but it takes place like seven years before she's supposed to be born. Like it takes place in the late twenties and she's born in 1935 or something. Huh. So she's in the movie, but she's negative seven. It takes place in the late twenties. I thought so. Like I thought it was like in the gangster, like Mashy day of no, America. I don't think so. What, what year do you think it is? Maybe thirties or forties. Uh, eh, it's all the same to me. I don't know. Flappers prohibition. It can't be the twenties because didn't like, uh, Dumbledore just, destroy him in 45. It says the first Fantastic Beast movie starts in December of 1926. Huh. So it's in the late 20s. Okay. But apparently McGonagall's in the movie, even though she's not born yet canonically. So uh, who even knows if anything in how the movie How do you know matters. how old McGonagall is? So I just saw people on Twitter complaining about McGonagall being in the movie. And I thought, how could anyone complain about McGonagall being in yeah. it? But then they were like, she's not supposed to be born yet, which well, seems the, a When do they ever list McGonagall's birthday? Like, I'm, sure, I'm sure they did at some point. Or maybe it's, it, that's the thing is maybe they listed it on Pottermore or something not actually in the books. And then yeah. J.K. Rowling's like, oh, whatever. They definitely don't list it in the books. They <laughs> yeah. definitely don't. <laughs> McGonagall would never tell anyone her age. Just let her be in the movie. We need someone good in we there. We need something good. Let's have McGonagall in there. I know. I, know. Um, I, was, I, was, I do want to see it. And then Travis was telling me, too, that the reviews on it are really bad, too. 40% for critics <sighs> and 69% nice for audience. Oh, well, I'm still going to see Apparently, it. she's not great, which makes me happy. Well, I know. I mean, I'm not happy about the Johnny Depp thing either, but, mm -hmm. like... I still got to see it. True. That's where I'm at. I will see it at some point later down the road when I can watch it for free and not actually contribute any money. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the most so, yeah. frugal human alive. <laughs> well, I just don't want to put money towards the thing with him in it. That's fair. I doubt he gets any of the movie from a red box. I, you know, if he gets a penny from me, I'll be upset. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not sure what the rest of the Horcruxes are at this point. I'm just kind of waiting because we, we don't even know how many Wait, so there you actually named, are. You named Nagini the cup. We mm -hmm. already know the ring and the diary mm -hmm. and the locket. And the locket. That's so you're five. only missing one. Yeah, I think I'm only missing one because they said it, it would be split into seven parts. So there'd be six But the seventh is Voldemort. Is Voldemort. Yeah, yeah so and only you, missing one. Yeah, and you're guess was like maybe oh maybe a Ravenclaw thing yeah yeah okay That's, okay I like that cool yeah that makes me feel nice uh, a Hufflepuff thing a Ravenclaw thing and Nagini are my guesses for the final three any guesses where any of them are oh man um I don't even know where Ravenclaw is from I'm really not sure. Okay. Maybe they're also in Gringotts. Who knows? Yeah, I, I really honestly have no idea where the other stuff could be. That's okay. <laughs> Just trying to get as many no, predictions totally. out of you no, as yeah. possible. Yes, definitely, definitely. Make me look as silly as humanly possible. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's it. Any more questions for me? Well, what do you think is going to happen to them now that they're surrounded? No. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know. The next chapter I did see was called Malfoy Manor. So mm -hmm. my guess would be that they are not going to get out of the situation. They're going to mm -hmm. get basically kidnapped into Malfoy Manor and then they're going to get approached by the Death Eaters. But that doesn't bode well for Harry because then Voldemort would like come in and try to kill him. So I don't know. Maybe they go to the manor and then Voldemort tries to come in and kill him. But then the Order members figure it out because I would assume that the Order members have some sort of if the Death Eaters can trace Harry I would hope that the Order of the Phoenix members can trace him if he's in Malfoy Manor not with a bunch of protective charms I guess so That's fair. I don't know we'll have to see okay mm -hmm. well so Megan oh, I'm excited too <laughs> Megan thank you so much for joining and listeners thank you so much for listening do you have anything you want to promote to the not listeners really. of Potterless thanks for having me oh no problem I guess people can check out my Instagram if they want to see cute pictures of my daughter. She's very cute. Yeah. <laughs> and if you retro back enough, you can find recipes that I put on years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, that's at Maggie Fru. I'm sure you're tagged and stuff that I've posted before. Yeah. But listeners, thank you so much for listening. Meg, thanks for joining. And until next time, as they say in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter before they sign off of, b b what was it? Potter Watch. <laughs> Wizard <laughs> on! <laughs> If you enjoy the sound of my voice in your eardrums, but you're all caught up on Potterless and Horse, you can go to PotterlessPodcast.com and check out the Collaborations tab, where I list all of the other podcasts that I have been a guest on. There's a lot of really fun ones, some of which hosted by people who were guests on Potterless. Potterless was created by Mick Schubert. It is hosted by Mick Schubert. It is edited by Mick Schubert. It is produced by Mick Schubert, as well as Leanne Davis, Vicky Garcia, Aaron Johnson, Jesse Horgan, Natalie Klobuchar, Deborah Oltons, Klaus Zerlobu, Rebecca Adamick, Frank Chiotto, Marchismo, Tori Larsic, Samantha Rose, Juan Sanfeli, Eugenia Dowsett, Kieran Webb, Abid Med, Caitlin Jordan Pontolo, Rosemary 
Dodge, Joe Belay, Marie Lisa C. Keen, Ariel Bird, Romina Rivden, Eric Camille, Doc, Russell Dunk, Dustin Mullen Cooch, Audra, Eleanor Kerlin, Sydney Cawthorn, Billy Hinton, Rossanne Batamana, Andrea Franz, Nikita Power, Lala Palmer, Chelsea Green, Taylor Armstead, Love Cash Longer, Ali Madsen, Cassandra Aponte, Roxy Chaos, Amelia Krause, Sean Montag, Sarah Nink, Ben Silver, Rachel Guthrie, Zachary Pulido, Jessica Ann Arnica, The Daughter, Tiago Costa, Daisy Carton, Sutter, Jessica Jacob, Orca Grover, Steve Trillor, Vivian the Owl, Takari Arant, Haley Hastings, Marino, Mr. Pinky Pan, Angelina Withrid, Ross Marie Heise, Lee Ganji Singh, Alex Bisholta, Brian Williams, Caitlin Sullivan, Finn Stucky, Mosin Siddiqui, Grace Riggle, Sammy Shaw, Raul Pineda, Ingen Odstadter, Mari Wynn, Brian Wingate, Alexandra Consulver, John Cocker, Jen and Juice, Noel Basile, Tao, Emily Tyrell, Michael Russell, Robin Fernandez, Patricio Colon, Will Barrington, Liz Bigelow, Mariah Noah, Brandon Pickens, Sarah Enslin, Claire Spencer, Teal, Cena Schutzberg, Rory Collier, Glory Gillum, Sarah and Patrick Donovan, Alicat 29, Halle Bowen, Veronica Bartova, Kevin Harnoy, Lada B, Noah Tracy Toya, Lucinda, Carlos Nino, Pam Webb, Nikki Emilio, Colleen King, Jennifer Marklu, Freddy J. Svedson, Ivor Peterson, Naomi Guglielmo, Tyler Latshaw, Summer Raffle, Heather Fleischman, Vera Cullifan, Carrie D. Bagson, Andrea Kroc, Lisa Grieven, Lynn Walker, Emily Gale, Ryan King, Cameron Watkins, Justin Montero, Christine Saunders, Jacob Harris, Toothless Walnut, Weekend at Dead Cat, Ladies Maya Gray, Mark Body, Polly Burge, Kimberly Savage, Surgeon Thon Megupta, Brittany Gutierrez, Nita Atabani, Bavi Patel, Tumnus Moran, Remy Fontaine, Mats Furley, Sarah Shecker, Lauren Cook, Nova VM, Kyle, Zena Rosnowski, Emily Tilly, Colleen Mage, Harlan Haskins, Akaksha Soxena, Wouter Vander Maiden, Shelby Darnell, Noelia, Reese Clark, Adriana Cox, Brian, Yukima Beats Waffles, Washin Large, Jenny Campione, Nikki Harris, Kara Hamilton, Dorcas, Courtney Hemwood, Kina Roan, Amanda Alford, Sabrina, Lauren Cook, Claire Chalinor, Alicia McLaren, and Can't I Potter? Web design by Kelly Beckman, and the music is by Bettina Campamanis. You can find us on social media at facebook.com slash potterless, twitter.com slash potterless pod, instagram.com slash potterless podcast, or reddit.com slash r slash potterless. For all information about the show, you can go to potterlesspodcast.com, and for bonus content, you can go to patreon.com slash potterless. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, as they say in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, a wizard on!